My friends, Lashana Tova, we welcome in the Jewish year 5781. And I am sorry that I am doing this virtually alone and only with Ashley's help. But we wanted to do something that was particular to our community today. So what I'm gonna be offering is my uh, Rosh Hashanah remarks or Devar for the day, followed by the three prayers that are normally said in our prayer book. And that will be that small snapshot that you will be able to view from your apartment um, at the appointed times. So we're going to begin with uh, the Devar. And like so many of you, I have been astounded to be standing in this auditorium virtually alone. And for 24 years, we have gathered together, first with 12 people in the fall of 1996. Five years later, we had 40 who were assembled together to celebrate. And last year, um, and actually during that, that fifth year, it was out of that small grouping that a group of residents said, please stop inventing the wheel. And we created the Sador that we have today, which we have used for nearly 20 years. And I am grateful for those early residents who helped with that maneuver. Last year, we had 80 people who came together. They were friends and family, neighbors from across the street, and neighbors and friends from within our community. We all met in this room to begin the new year afresh with new ideas and with renewed hope for the coming year. We had no idea then what we were facing and it's clear even today, we still don't know what the next year will bring. Given all the uncertainty and ambiguity, I went back to the basic text uh, for this day, for these two days of Rosh Hashanah. The storyline from these two days is the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham and Sarah. And the story begins with the promise of a child to a barren couple delivered by three uh, angels and moves all the way across his life to finally his marriage with Rebecca. Delight and grief are intertwined along his lifetime. It begins with Sarah, who is barren, but her maid, Hagar, who is not. Abraham and Sarah are to be the family counted as numerous as the stars, and yet they have only one child. There is the story of the awful decision a father has to make who is told to bind his only child as a possible sacrifice and then is released when God finally intervenes. And then we have finally the intense story of Abraham's great sorrow at Sarah's death and the comforting of Isaac following his mother's death when he finds his wife, Rebecca. The story of these two women, Hagar and Sarah, have captured my imagination this year. They are analogies for our time. First, we can join in the delight over the birth of a long look for child, the promised child, the flesh of their flesh, whose name means laughter and who brought them great laughter and joy. And on this first day, we can rejoice with Abraham and Sarah that promises do come true, even though they seem almost impossible. And many of you have told me of marriages and births and engagements of this past year, events that you had only hoped to be a part of and yet were able to participate with them, to laugh, and you did participate and we rejoice at the sweet moments of this last year and pray that the next year will bring its own set of promises, hopes, and dreams fulfilled. But there is the second story of Hagar and her son Ishmael, whose father is Abraham. The Torah tells us that Sarah's jealousy became a single-minded concern that not her son, but Ishmael, the first son of Abraham, would displace her only child. She demands that Hagar and the child be removed from the encampment to almost their certain death. 
And in the story, Hagar places her child under a bush and walks away, unable to bear his distress. In her tearful prayers, God comes to her and Ishmael and she are able to start a new life entirely separate from Abraham and Sarah. These two women are the story of the family of wealth and privilege and the story of the poor family who are made even more vulnerable by the actions of others. This year we have read and experienced and known about the economic distress of many caused by the virus. The hardships have multiplied by the thousands as workers of all social strata have found themselves weeping about the future just like Hagar. Mothers and fathers without jobs, children without adequate shelter, food and the social safety net of school have all disappeared. Viruses are apolitical but the actions and reactions of governments around the globe have deepened the suffering of the most vulnerable. And we as a community have not uh, been exempt. We too have suffered personally, physically, emotionally, and socially. This year, the walk of remembrance around our pond revealed the names of our beloved family members, neighbors, and friends who have died and many because of the pandemic. We know the sorrows and joys of being members of a family, a neighborhood, and a community. As we prepare for this next year, we remember the three themes of Rosh Hashanah. Teshuva, which means repentance, Tefillah, which means prayer, and Zadaka, which means charity. As we close for this portion, I offer and encourage you to offer aid to those in need, to whatever charities and organizations speak to your heart. Two, I ask you to reflect on your own commitment and support for those who are due justice, for fair treatment, and for dignity. And finally, as you're eating your apples and honey and drinking wine and grape juice, that you give thanks for the moments of sweetness that have come through your life during these uncertain times as we walk into the future. Although we are not able to gather, we are able to say the prayers together. And this first one is for our congregation here and our people. So join me in prayer. Lord, we pray to you for the whole house of Israel scattered across the earth, yet bound together by a common history and united by a common heritage of faith and hope. Be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard. Give them strength to endure and lead them soon from bondage to freedom and from darkness to light. Bless our assembly of people scattered in their apartments with all the congregations around the lands far and near. Uphold us, shield us, and bestow upon us abundant life and health. May peace and happiness come to us. Bring to fulfillment the blessing of Moses, that the Lord made you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you as God has promised. O oh God, send your healing to the sick, your comfort to all who are in pain or anxiety, and your tender love to the sorrowing hearts among us. Be their refuge through this time of trial as we pass from weakness to strength, from suffering to consolation, from lonely fear to courage and faith. Amen. And then a prayer for our nations and its ruler. We pray for all who uphold positions of leadership and responsibility in our national life. Let your blessing come upon them and make them responsive to your will so that our nation may be uh, to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen the power of our own self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare and its people. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. 
and cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all of its citizens. Imbue us with zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and in all lands, and help us to keep our homes safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. And then finally, a prayer for the state of Israel. We pray for the land of Israel and her people. May Israel's borders know peace and its inhabitants in tranquility. And may the bonds of faith and faith, which unite Jews of all lands, be a source of strength to Israel and to all of us. God of land and ages, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more glow with light for us and for all the world. And may we all say, Amen. In closing, these final words from uh, the Psalms. Behold, a good doctrine has been given to us. Do not forsake it. It is a tree of life to those who hold it fast, and all who cling to it find happiness. Its ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all of its paths are peace and then our benediction for the day. And now at the beginning of the new year, we do pray for blessing, for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, amen. For the spirit of insight and understanding, may it be so. For the spirit of knowledge and reverence, amen. May we overcome trouble, pain, and sorrow. May it be so. May our days and years increase. Eternal God and God of all peoples, renew us for a good year. Amen and amen. Lashana Tova. Avinu Malkeinu, chotmeinu, besefer, besefer, chayim atovim. Avinu, malkeinu, chotmeinu, 
Oh, my God. 